Hi, Emulator. I'm here to talk today about this lovely thing we just bought, the Summit Network, or excuse me, Extreme Network Summit 348. We just bought two of these off eBay for almost 300 bucks. Um, wasn't initially happy with what I got, and you'll see why in a moment. First off, that uh, they come with two power supplies. Well, these ones come with two power supplies, and uh, discovered upon unpacking it and plugging it in that that one is fried. Well, whatever. I mean, we can deal with that. We bought two switches and only need one, so we can borrow a power supply from the other one. That one I just showed you is, uh, they have a much more severe problem. And the one I just showed you, let me uh, kill my music here. The uh, one I just showed you is the one that we already fixed the more severe problem. Um, as I said, we uh, unpacked them and hooked them up, or hooked one of them up anyway. And I've got this one hooked to some phones and to our other switch up here, which has been in use for a while. And uh, you see, we wait for this thing to boot. I just turned the switch on, and actually, if I uh, I don't have a serial port hooked up. Hold on. Where's the serial port? Right here. Um, now I can watch the thing boot up here. Um, well, I thought I could. Guess I didn't leave hyper terminal open. Stupid me. Alright, there we go. That's the switch booting. It's a managed switch, so that's a serial port console thingy. Okay, the switch is booted. Um, that phone there is plugged in here. Should be, uh, should be coming on any minute now, I guess. I don't really know what it's doing. The whole Ethernet port isn't doing anything either. It's kind of weird. Well, this switch might be even more broken than the other ones. Um, the other ones at least gave me power to the phone. I'm not really sure what's going on here right now. To be honest with you. There we go. We got some green lights. Anyway, the phone comes on. Does its normal boot up thing here. And it, it has, seems to remember, it seems to get its configuration, but that's what it remembers when it was plugged in before. You see at the bottom it says network starting. It stays at network starting. Um, and of course, I'm a fail right now anyway. I don't have the upstream connection connected. I just plugged it in. Go to our other switch up there. Um, there should be a network connection between port 48 here and the gigabit port and this thing should be doing the rest of its boot, as you'll notice, it's not. So, since it is a managed switch, of course, the immediate conclusion is that whoever owned it before, because it's an eBay purchase, whoever owned it before had some odd configuration that's not compatible with my network. So, what are we going to do about that? Well, we're going to reset it. There's no reset button, you have to log in to reset this one. The default username is admin, the default password is blank. Well, oh shucks, login failed. What are we going to do now? Um, I did some searching on the internet trying to find instructions to reset this thing. Those instructions don't exist. Um, the section in the manual for if you forgot your password just says call tech support. I, well, it's, it's 10.30, 11 o'clock at night. I don't think I'm going to get anywhere with tech support. So I, I abandoned that idea. Um... Of course, my first, the first thing I did was email the guy who sold this on eBay, and he wasn't of any help. Didn't have the original password either. So I had to do a little more researching and solve the problem myself. And you already saw a little bit of hint of the solution. Of course, my screwdriver. I'm going to show you how to fix this in case you have the same switch. 
and the same problem. Um, first step, of course, is to shut the power off. I'm not even going to bother to unplug it. I'm just going to shut the power off as soon as I can find the switches. Remember, there's two power supplies to two switches. And I already took out the screws that need to be taken out because I didn't figure you wanted to watch me on video take screws out. The ones you need to remove are all six on the back. There's three on this side, three in the same spots on the other. And there's one screw I didn't take out. The front two screws on each of the rack ears have to come out. We'll get rid of this one. I already got rid of all the other ones. I don't remember why I left this one in. Just maybe I thought you guys wanted to watch me unscrew one screw. I don't know. Um, once that's done, you find a place to set your camera so that you don't have to keep trying to give people whiplash while you're doing it. This thing, like many things, the case slides backwards and off. And when I say slides, I use that term loosely. The last one, I picked up by the rack ears and shook it, because I couldn't figure out the right way. I'm going to get a screwdriver, a flathead. Oh, and there's also a little uh, camper-proof sticker here. Thing that firmware on it is copyright 2003. I don't think it has a warranty anymore. Get in here. The other one was a lot easier. Like I said, I picked it up and shook it. There we go. It's coming off now. And of course, as you're watching me taking this off, you're thinking I'm going to show you a jumper or something. Not quite. What I found was a little bit different. Certainly not something I expected. I was quite surprised when I got it apart and found what was in here. Yeah, make sure those are off. It does have a relatively large amount of power in it, and it's a power over, a 48 port power over Ethernet switch. Okay, and now what's inside this puppy, huh? I wasn't sure what to expect myself, and that was kind of what I expected—a big ass circuit board with a lot of Ethernet ports on the front of it. This is not what I expected. A 64 megabyte compact flash memory card. And as you're guessing, that is where the configuration is stored. So I'll remove this little retainer screw here. And remove that there card. Now of course my first thought was what's just gonna happen what's gonna happen if I just boot this thing without the card? So of course we'll show you. Just in case you're wondering too. Instead of doing its normal boot-up sequence, full loader unable to open file dev fat wd0 image dot map. So we'll shut that back down, and what I do with the card, we'll show you exactly how I solve that problem. It's easier than you might think. It's actually very easy. So here at my desk, and take that CF card there, and put it in the computer. I would consider myself very lucky that the file system on this card is something Windows reads easily. That up, Facebook. Anytime you're going to do something crazy like this, we'll use the other monitor. Anytime you're going to do something like crazy like this, it's probably a good idea to back up what's there just in case. Um, I found out in this case that the file name and location on the card matched exactly what it told me on the screen. Whoops, that's the wrong file. Where did I just put that? Oh, right here. Um, matched, it, it matched perfectly, so I figured that it actually uses the file system and not, like, sector numbers or something like that. If you're unsure, if you don't 100% know what you're doing, obviously I'd, like, make an image backup of this, but in this case, I just, just backing up the files is enough. And we open up that, um, compact flash card. We have this folder PRI, and inside it is config.bin. Delete that sucker. Toast it. Am I sure I want to delete it? Of course I want to delete it. It's a pain in my... Uh, uh, never mind. So, that file's gone. Come down here, obviously, always eject things properly. Now save to remove it, which I shall do. 
back over to the switch. Put that sucker back in there. And just because I'm not sure how much engineering went into the airflow on this thing, since we're going to have it on for a longer time this time, I'm going to take the top here, and I'm going to cover up that big gaping hole at the top, because that obviously wasn't engineered in. <laughs> they didn't count on people running these things without the top. That retainer screw out of the way there. All right. And turn this thing on. After deleting that file, watch the booting process. the switch takes longer to boot than my server does. And since we're already focused on this, focused on this, the first thing we'll do is try logging in. Again, password, default password is blank. Hey, look, let me write in. And immediately after log in, I log out. It asks me if I want to save my changes. I don't remember making any, but I most definitely do. I'm assuming what that's doing is copying the file from try to set on that card. I'm not really sure what it's up to. Whatever it's doing, it's taking its merry time. Alright, we get the idea greater than. Finish it up. Hey, back to Walmart Project. And while we were doing that, while well, I kind of upsetting all the phones now booting, get it done this time. Booting, yeah, we know that. Yep, got an IP this time, and TFT provisioning. A lot further than we got last time. Hey, it's provisioned, it's working. Your extension number is U-3-4. Yay, it works. Alright, that's all.